but a murder. Hmm. I might do him then. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, and welcome to Fact versus Fiction. <laughs> well, murder most foul is the only thing on the menu. Well, yeah. Mm, Didn't you watch like, the really really last menu. episode? <laughs> That's... I mean, I'm a big fan of chicken, and there's no other way to get chicken by them murdering them foul. Yet. John doesn't have chicken. He only has peacocks outside. I, I, I honestly, I honestly thought you were going to say he only has people. <laughs> ah, yes, those famous people. Birds. Birds can be people better if too. I said the, I was going to say that would have worked if I said it the other way around. Ah, yes, those famous birds. People. <laughs> See, it you got more of a laugh out of the other way around. Actually, also, I don't know if we've started this officially or not, considering it is my week to start. Say welcome. Have we not started? Why don't you I don't take know. it away? We did say welcome. I d- <laughs> I d- see, the thing is, I do this running gag where it's like I just say and welcome after we've done, uh, in air quotes, a funny bit and pretend we've started, and half of the time I don't know if we've actually started or not. Wait, is this a thing now? He's just it, it, is, it is when gag. me and Tom intro, you and, uh, you and John actually put effort into yours. We just wing it. <laughs> this sounds just like a, like, uh, a good... Uh... Euphemism for just the lie. We're the bad <laughs> boys of this podcast. Yes, <laughs> as represented by your backwards cap. Exactly. In, oh wait, no. We're the bad boys of this podcast. <laughs> Everyone is oh, Tom has just turned his cap sideways. I was gonna say, ah, uh, the best kind of podcast humor. <laughs> oh. The best kind of podcast humor. Visual humor. It is now backwards. Yeah, a, a visual That's joke like I think Tom. really translates well to the podcast medium. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than. Turning your hat about yay far to really get the humour ramping up. Thank you for saying How yay. Fun. Yet again, a thing we can't demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, to be fair, like you know even we uh, don't get that one. Yeah. Do you not want to know something you can demonstrate? And I also bet that you will have trouble describing this no, hand we do gesture. Not. <laughs> oh my god! It doesn't the whale have a penis. name. <laughs> 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 I'm technically right, which is horrifying. Let's continue. Oh, God. <laughs> I think we should just I... let the listeners' imaginations run with that. Yeah, yeah. anyway. I, I apologise to the listeners that I don't. Hands. <laughs> that don't have hands, did you say? <laughs> or Tom's hands. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you said, I apologise to the listeners that don't have hands. Yeah, That's I what we're I doing with we, them. We Matt. also apologise to listeners who don't have hands. That's <laughs> That must be difficult. I like Matt just like taps a mic and just goes... I like to apologise to all audience members who are amputees. Let's continue. I'm just like, okay. Oh, <laughs> well, it's uh, like after every recording session, we should we just probably just come back and open the next episode. It's like, okay, who do we need to apologise to this oh, time? Speaking of apologies, I actually have a retraction for <laughs> a few episodes ago. I believe it was the Panjandrum episode. Are you unapologising? Uh, I, oh, no, I apologize. am apologising oh. for something I said. I'm I said something that was incorrect, and I am now correct. Following his judgment. Uh, basically, I think uh, someone mentioned a man named Brian Johnson who was involved in the Panjandrum incident, and I made a joke saying Brian Johnson from Queen, but in fact oh, Brian, Brian Johnson May is from DC, and Brian May is oh, from Queen. Dear, oh, I've been you meaning to repeat that for several oh, episodes, fuck. and that's why oh, this isn't going to like appear on the... haunting me. <laughs> this isn't going to appear on like the interwebs for another month. Oh, oh you yeah, pretty us. much. <laughs> you fucked us. Although on the bright side, that episode has gone live, and God. we are now on Spotify. Mm. Segways, we can do it. Yeah. We're on Spotify. Oh, look, all if four... people have been tweeting me about that, uh, you can stop. And now... oh, <laughs> well, they actually... Tweet, tweet me. No, because oh. the episode's only just gone up. Oh, okay, good. But if people do end up uh, tweeting me, then by the time this one comes out, uh, I'll, I'll have set the record straight. Five, five years like down the line, we've got like ten Ever guys. Really? <laughs> I, I mean, I do. Li- I mean, you say on Twitter, but I feel like they're more likely to tweet at me because I'm the one that tweets out every time an episode goes live, and you just retweet me. You've got the job <laughs> of the YouTube comments, Tom. They're even worse. I, I do. I do. <laughs> I, I was supposed to do that, but my computer's been dead for almost a month. Yeah, John had a brick graphics card. <laughs> anyway. anyway, we should be speaking of. We should introduce we ourselves. Our names now. <laughs> Now, technically, since I'm your host this week, my name is Corby, or whatever you want to call me at this point. Um, other names are available. Trademark, pending. Uh, <laughs> depends on what the name is. Anyway, to my immediate right, we have Not my helpful. other co-host for this week. 
That's Tom. I you. am Tom. <laughs> I'm, and I'm the other fi boy other of fiction yes. boy. There's your cue. <laughs> I felt like he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna be on Tom's right. Tom's on my left. That but, just yeah. makes it all kind of is, fucked. On the Discord, all our cameras appear in different places. No, no he got you right for me. Well, well, I got two, two out of four of us have the same layout, so that's fine. Anyway, just to avoid further confusion, uh, man who's flashing his teeth at us, please go next. <laughs> I'm a gaunt, soulless figure hiding behind a veil of masculinity. Call John. I, I've had a day. <laughs> That's, that's, I say, that's his full title. We can only address him as John, though, because none of us... Is what's on the birth certificate, <laughs> that whole thing. Probably. It's really awkward when you have to sing him happy birthday and he demands the full title. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just happy demand... Happy birthday, dear hollow gaunt man, fragile, and I had a day. No, I just... I just <laughs> it's just you. the acronym. You just have to figure out how to yeah. sound it out. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. And finally, we have... Faceless McGee, who likes to live in a hole. Well, He's got a webcam. He I doesn't need to do this. Oh, I do. He, it's just on my Mac. he, do, okay, he right, does, right. but on... an overheating Mac that sounds like it's taking off for the moon, or not my face, which I argue not is. my face is a better deal. Yeah, it really yes, is. Definitely. You also get better audio quality for this way, and I don't know what it is, but no, I do now have a mic specific. Oh my! Or oh, that's a tape measure. Uh, oh. I can use my MacBook uh, if I wanted to. But I, I think it's got directional recording, so it might even not record the takeoff sound. So we'll see. <laughs> John, why have you got a tape measure? Why don't you? I mean, I probably do somewhere in the house. I, I work just didn't. In certain I didn't. I didn't bring it to the podcast. It's show and tell week, Corby. You've let the. You've you should the always board. bring your tools to the podcast. I, I bring you three, don't I? <laughs> hey, hey. hey, I do. I do. I'm sat at my computer, which is where I do my research. Uh, you can't, the people at home can't yes. see he, the he inverted commas. He did, yeah. Mm. I do my research, and uh, well, my bookshelf's behind me, but what were the back into my right. Like if you inverted them, is that just them turning upside down? Or is Wait, it turning inside out? If what? you inverted somebody... Did you say the Pope? No, no. Oh, if you inverted the Pope... That hat would be weird. Would he be Protestant? <laughs> <laughs> or would he be another religion? You inverted somebody. Would that just be... <laughs> I don't think that was that funny, but apparently I've killed Tom. On the, on the plus side, this is a hypothetical this week. Um, right. Uh... <laughs> I, I, like how, I like how our hypotheticals are just slowly becoming... I just ask a random <laughs> dumbass question. The problem, last is, week, the problem is the organs would swing while you walk and stuff like that, and you'd probably like... It, it, oh. it would hurt to stand. This wasn't meant to be the hypothetical. I did have one in mind. But fuck it, we're inverting you... the Pope. <laughs> we're inverting the hypothetical. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what the hat would look like. Even the Pope. Would the hat like become almost like a veil? I really thought goes... you said the Pope. <laughs> oh my, yes. I'll tell you what, I actually, uh, yeah. Matt, do you want to give us your real hypothetical? I'm, I'm, I want to just clarify on the inverted thing. What I actually asked was what would it... An inverted person look like? Is that turning them upside down or inside Red. out? Red. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Red and slightly fleshy from the tendrons. Oh, God. Red is actually a good segue to what my actual hypothetical was, which is do Cybermen embody communism? Ooh. I legit, when you said Red, my brain was like, how long is an acceptable time to leave someone on Red for? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> If you think about know. it, they're all technically equal because everybody will be not the least. I mean, if that's them killing a upgrade. Sure, but what's what's the what's the bloody? Is it like the cyber emperor over there? The, the head one? Oh yeah, there what's, was um, a big one in the Christmas special. Yeah, if if he's yeah. if he, if he's an emperor, that implies a monarchist structure, so therefore well, not communist. Stalin was technically an emperor. He, he never called he himself an emperor. Does that mean there's he a king called... cyberman somewhere as well? Benevolent dictator, maybe. <laughs> Who appears on the currency that Cybermen use. I was about to compare which communism. is, of course, Bitcoin. I was about to compare communism to a hive mind then. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I mean, well, yes, if you've got a Cyberman emperor, then it has a monarchical structure, but at the same time, he's just somebody who helps coordinate everything rather than being like an imperial royalistic figure because they have no concept of that. I guess you can have a communist with. Guess you can, can you can have a communist state with a monarchy. I mean, they did try it out. I believe in Hungary for a bit. 
I mean, Hungary has tried literally every form of government imaginable. I mean, yeah. To be fair, a lot of places have in Europe. I mean, we're like, like the one place that, that has just like, no, nope, Monica, pretty much the whole way through, except for oh, that okay. one period we don't talk about. Even though he loves his plan. What, what, France and Bastille Day? <laughs> that, that thing we don't talk about. Was not the French national anthem. <laughs> it's gonna bite. To be fair, on my oh, end, where oh, the recording oh, comes oh, through, oh, it wasn't that good of a quality, so. I mean, that's just me. That is also true. I, I am a low budget. I don't know why my brain hops to Harry Houdini. You're I'm a very, I, my, very low just budget Harry that Houdini. Sentence there. I am a low budget. Meh. <laughs> I don't have any other qualities. I am a low budget. I always say David Mitchell, but that's just me. What, what for me or for you? Y for you. Definitely you. I'm happy to be a low budget Dave Mitchell. But like real low budget. Like I'm talking like Nigerian studio. <laughs> anyway, uh... hey, at least it's not stick figure animation on the web. <laughs> Like with, with just with like his stamp, the stamp of his face over the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh god. Anyway, well, we really didn't talk about communism. I don't think. But... The inverted was enough. Yeah. The invert. We're inverting the Pope instead. To which I still prefer the idea that it's a woman with a veil that is um. So. So the inverted well, that Pope is, is so a bride. Scottish widows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Scottish widows. <laughs> Everyone knows okay. the famous opposite. The famous opposite of Italy, Scotland. Yeah, <laughs> actually, if you look at it on a map and you flip Italy up, Scottish widow, if you Italian fold, pope, you if can you make fold a Europe in half, <laughs> like if you take what? Italy and basically flip it upside down, it's quite similar in shape to Scotland. If you travel back far enough, Scotland was actually on the equator. Well, that's not a real map. <laughs> Did you just look at the Game of Thrones map? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, still and... not real. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> still yeah. dead. Anyway. Tom. Hurt me, Daddy. Let's go. Please. It's time for episode three. I expect great things. Are we ready, boys? Uh, aye, aye, aye Captain. Remember uh, when you said you were very interested in the dating lives of 14-year-olds? Oh, fuck you. This is, I just think it's going to be it. I will test to you. that in court. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I got a VPN. Oh, God. <laughs> so I could watch anime. A very anime. private network. Is that what that actually stands for? I uh, no, believe. virtual private network. Yeah, close oh. enough. You had two out of three. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Into the anyway. dating lives of 14-year-olds. This is Ooh. One Small Town, Episode 3, Part 1. The morning after. <laughs> A slightly smaller town, because there's oh, less people in it. <laughs> all the dead. Can we, can we list off the potential dead? You're not wrong. Midsummer murders, but real. <laughs> <laughs> that implies it's a real story. Oh dear. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. So the episode starts very similarly to episode two with a montage of all the main characters. Basically, all of them waking up dealing with uh, hangovers or various uh, situations heads. from the previous <laughs> night. Or well, does Amy just not wake up? She's just, <laughs> she she's just gone she's, story. she's in a coma. It's fine. <laughs> Amy does not appear in this montage at all. <laughs> <laughs> she wakes up like two days later. <laughs> well, it's a thing no. though. If you're unconscious for like, oh, like something like I think it's ten to twenty minutes, you do actually suffer brain damage. Oh, yes, no, it is bad. Brain damage. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not confident on Amy's chances. <laughs> I was going to say that this this uh, whole thing's going to turn out to be like her comatose dream sequence, isn't it? <laughs> There's going to be Harry several Daniel characters done. whose dream this could be, I feel. <laughs> what, Amy Azazoff, the blind demon sultan? What the Christ? Are we? This has got to look after him. That's, uh, anyway. Uh, well, it's like, it's like yes, um, we... I'm going to say before Tom goes on, it's like that old creepypasta theory that all the events of the Pokemon games go on because Ash is oh, in a coma. Oh, he's in coma. I actually quite uh, like that yeah. theory. I mean, it's depressing. It's or the theory scary. that um, what Harry Potter imagined it all for, as a coping mechanism for the abuse. It, yeah, it is, it is depressing, the Ash one, because it implies that, like, the first couple of gyms he failed at, even in his dream. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. he, he, in his dream, he didn't even win until he got the Alola League, which isn't even a proper Pokemon League. No, because I'm pretty sure Ash and Brock gave him badges out of pity. I'm yeah, Miss, anyway, Misty and Brock gave him pity and badges, then joined yeah. him on his quest <laughs> this shit's hilarious let's see where it goes 
<laughs> oh, fucking see, dragon. See, to me, in Tom's story, <laughs> Harry O'Daniels is like the Irish Brock. <laughs> As he opened his eyes and a hyperbeam. You could actually out. imagine Brock like, like that being a similar character because, design. Say, it's, be, it's because we all said he was 35. Well, Harry O'Daniels does open his eyes. Oh, oh, to the truth. Anyway, uh, let's continue. <laughs> He'll open yours too. Uh, so, yeah, the montage of everyone uh, having hangovers. Uh, Rachel wakes up in bed and Harry is there as he stayed the night. Uh, what? Simon is. They banged. Yeah. What? They banged. <laughs> the... I at the end of the last Harry episode, as saw, she had him inside. No, into the night. Went, yeah. <laughs> he disappeared into someone, that's the problem. <laughs> I thought Harry oh, asked God. her out and then vanished. Smoke bomb. Harry out asked there. her out, then she asked him in. That was the pun. Oh. <laughs> I was not concentrating. I think I was too busy. I think he might have joked that he disappeared train. into some swirl of mist or something. I mean, it was it was the heat stroke episode, so we were all delusional. Yeah. Oh, all oh, right, yeah, I forgot about that. But yeah, Rachel is uh, very hungover. Uh, she rushes to the bathroom and bangs on the door, but Simon is in there because he is also hungover. Climbing out, and the he toilet. is leaning over the sink. We see uh, Ivy grabbing a big glass of water and a packet of crisps. That's the best way to recover. Ah, bacon disclaimer. Dehydration, bacon great. Full English. Uh, we get Mike Ethan adding contacts to his phone. Uh, we see him adding in Ben's name. And then he uh, looks over and sees the packet of drugs that he bought from Drake. He picks them up and shoves them into the back of a drawer, then shuts the drawer. Next to his... Uh, Jenny... <laughs> I just remembered the secret gambling stash. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't talk about the secret gambling stash unless we talk about the secret gambling stash. Well, we will. We will soon. It's what? It's like Fight Club. <laughs> the first, the first rule, of rule of the gambling secret gambling stash. stash. You don't you talk, talk about, talk secret, about gambling the secret gambling stash. stash. <laughs> Second rule: oh. don't listen to the draw. It will just try and lure you. Oh yeah, the Eldritch Portal. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of draws, actually, I'm going to go on a tangent. Oh here. no. It's only long enough. Earlier, I think by talking about the draw in, in the last uh, time we talked about this show, uh, some sort of curse happened because earlier today, the kitchen drawer in my own kitchen, uh, where we keep the cutlery, fell out. What's okay. the secret gambling stash underneath? To get a fork and it kept going, basically. <laughs> See, it sounds so much interesting if you say the draw just kept going as if it didn't fall out, it just kept extending. Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, like in Bruce Without Almighty where he pulls the thing and it just... But no, we will be talking about the draw uh, soon enough, or will we? Um, yes. yes. And that means we will, but it will be next episode. Ah. Next fiction episode. Ah, ah. No draw spoilers uh, here. Right. There won't be any draw spoilers until we get to the draw. Uh, Jenny... Uh, is sitting oh. on her sofa with her laptop, uh, flicking through channels on the TV, and she is on Facebook and uh, looking at Ben's profile page and adding him as a friend. Sure. Thumbs friend up. gained. Achievement unlocked. Ding, ding. Level you up. can socialize. Good job. <laughs> but you still won't. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then we cut to the character who's arguably had the most interesting night, Elliot. Mm. He well, is, I, I'd, argue, uh, I'd argue that David had the most interesting night, to be honest. <laughs> okay, Elliot had the second most interesting <laughs> night then. I think, I think you're right there, Sean. Interesting. Yeah, so, yeah you've word. got a point. Well, what's, what's more interesting, getting shot or shooting someone, is the question we, on the table there. We can't ask David because he is unfortunately unresponsive. Because it turns out he's a punk ass bitch who couldn't take even one. Anyway. <laughs> Take more than one bullet. Even one what? Bullet? Yeah. <laughs> Who gives a shit if you're shot in the chest? You carry on until you drop dead. <laughs> so uh, Elliot is basically just sitting up in bed, staring into the distance. Uh, but he gets a call from Ivy. Okay, John? John just got wet. <laughs> <laughs> so Elliot is basically sitting upright in, in bed, staring into the distance. And then he gets a call from Ivy. Uh, and he answers. And they arrange to meet up later in the day and have their first date. Uh, Bo, they're, um, moving, they're moving fast. Yeah. I know he's like, going to be a lady killer. Nice. <laughs> now that I've murdered, I have a taste and for it. Chews on the gun. I do. <laughs> Why do I still have this? Directions. 
specifically call out a song that I wanted to be playing during this montage uh, called Parallel Worlds by Elliot Minor, which we oh, probably can't play for copyright there reasons. <laughs> yes, no, there is the, a, the folks at home... I, I was going through an Elliot Minor phase when I wrote this as well. You told me that, but I still but forgot I'll them. Just... <laughs> but I'll just say a, a few um, lines from the song so you get the vibe. Uh, one is, I'm stuck against the wall, I can't make a move, my heartbeat stops. And another is, I feel so alone again, it won't let me go. Well, yeah. Which I felt tapped into sort of what Elliot's probably feeling. He really Dead needs more. He, in a way, is in parallel worlds, having just killed a man. <laughs> Multiple worlds at once. <laughs> having just killed a man who, moments ago, was at a portal draw. He's in parallel worlds. <laughs> he can cross through the dimensions. Is that, that is what it. happens when you kill a man? Yes. Mm. Yeah, that's that's how you do it. John, stop getting more that's ideas. What, mm, that's what NASA don't want you to know. <laughs> it's in the draw. <laughs> Wait, why NASA? The secret to FDL, FDL travel is genocide. <laughs> 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 oh. like, like I was instantly defaults to NASA when the, probably our closest one similar to that would be CERN, <laughs> in, CERN. In, the, in Europe. <laughs> Stop blaming them on. St stop blaming on CERN. It ah. wasn't me. It was Stein's game. Don't listen to John. He's a CERNY. <laughs> that communist I'm not dystopia. Certain of that. Ooh, let's continue. Hey. That communist dystopia is coming. Just ask the Cybermen. The Cybermen will bring it. Is that a threat or a promise? Well, <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, so that's uh, the opening, and then the opening credits run. And we then go to Ben turning up at the Cobstern's house uh, because he's going to see Simon. Oh. Uh, Simon and Rachel, their last name is Cobstern. Right, okay. I have not written the names down. I don't think anyone has. I... But Thomas. I, I'm barely remembering I, first I, names. I've got their names written down a lot because I wrote the show. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. Uh, but yeah, he goes to see Simon, but Rachel answers the door and informs him Simon is way too hungover to see people, and he's gone back to bed. <laughs> Simon has returned to the lake. Please come back later. <laughs> he needs to drown a child to regenerate. Don't worry, that's why he's like decorate the garden. That's why he's like face deep in the sink. <laughs> he's very dehydrated. <laughs> uh, it would be Apple, does it? God oh. knows what it does to a kelpie. Simon, your tail's on show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> well. Horse tail or man tail? Yeah, you decide. Yes. That's not a question anyone <laughs> should have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a question. I asked it anyway. Uh. <clears throat> we asked the hard hitting questions here. Horse tail or man tail? You decide in the comments. So Rachel takes the opportunity <laughs> uh, to then ask Ben a favour. Uh, she uh, says that she was planning on going to check up on Amy, but she has company over and doesn't want to leave him alone in a strange house. So she asks Ben to go and check up on Amy for her. <laughs> hey, could you, could you go check on the deceased? I mean, my friend. Uh, I mean, she might have a bit of a mark on her head where she may have fallen over and down a sub flight of stairs. Uh, but I'm sure she's fine. <laughs> I'm just honestly surprised say, Harry O'Daniel didn't say, she doesn't want do to it on her unconscious body at this point. I was going to say, she doesn't want to leave her other friend alone, and so she won't leave one to check on the other, but she's willing to send... Has Ben met Amy? Maybe? Because no. if not... She, it's, yeah, ben has I'm not met say, Amy and does not know where so she lives. So she's sending <laughs> a stranger to check on her friend. But the key's here, yeah. don't rob him. Well, yeah. Rachel does know Ben. But Ben does not know Amy. I say, exactly, yes. so she's sending a strange... She's st sending to what Amy would be a stranger to check up on her. Yeah, that is correct. Oh, uh, Jesus yeah, Christ, so she, people. Uh, she writes down Amy's address and then sends Ben on his way. With the address, to clarify. She doesn't just write him down, write then send him down. <laughs> Memorize, leave. <laughs> Tears up and follows the note. Why was, why was Harry in all this? Uh, he was upstairs. Still, just stood in the window, nude, just looking down, <laughs> monologuing, <laughs> reciting Hamlet just to no one in particular. You just see ah, Simon. Yes. Everything's falling into place, one at a time. In kelpie form. 
<laughs> do they have a lake in their back or like a, a lake a pond in their back garden <laughs> i mean some people in ilkley probably do but not simon <laughs> it's just the noise of harry being drowned <laughs> he, 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 don't you remember he's the kelpie hunter you he'll, he'll survive somehow <laughs> They're fighting back and forth in the windows. <laughs> I do love the idea of that happening in the background of the scene, <laughs> just like um, like in um, uh, which Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man, where he's fighting the lizard in the library, and it cuts to a guy in headphones who's just facing away from it all. I feel like a bird is hit. Best scene in the movie. Uh, <laughs> probably, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> uh, so Ben does get to Amy's house. Uh, and Amy answers the door and says, Rachel, you're looking different. Ben explains that Rachel sent him over in her stead. Uh, right. who, was that, would, did Amy say that? Amy said that. Right. Amy was expecting Rachel to turn up. Right. Okay. Immediate concern, because uh, her face is half covered. My immediate blood. thought was concussion. <laughs> slash serious half, problems. half your face <laughs> is gone. She doesn't literally she think that Ben is Rachel. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, Ben explains that Rachel sent him because she has a guy over, and that piques Amy's uh, in- interest, and she just wants to know all the juicy goss, basically. Not the fact her friend ju- down a staircase not, very not, well. Not the fact her friend ditched her <laughs> in- injured, yeah. basically almost dying body uh, for a quick lay. Yeah, that's not the important. I thing, mean, yeah. at least she's important. Her home. Is what kind of hair is how tall is he? She then <laughs> left. She took her over, then left her. Yep. At this point, I'm just picturing like Rachel pretty much surfing Amy's body down the set of steps. <laughs> just kicked her over and surfed her down. <laughs> just kick flipped her, and that's what called you the concussion. Music from Point Break surf scenes playing in the background. <laughs> Mario Daniels what? runs over at the end. It's like that was a perfect 50-50 grind. <laughs> he holds up a, t- a scorecard, <laughs> which is what we're going to do at your house. Wait, anyway, let's go and do it. Uh, 50-50 oh. grind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well done. Oh. But yeah, Amy asks for more details uh, on the guy, but uh, Ben's just like, that's all I know. Uh, then he asks how Amy is feeling, as Rachel said that she'd had a fall. <laughs> Putting it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it lightly, yes. I had a fall involving my hands. Amy says that she oh, is yeah. fine. She has made a miraculous recovery. I was <laughs> going to say, considering what happened to her. her head. Right, she was pushed, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So I she saw pushed. the stairs you were referring to, Tom. She should be dead. <laughs> no, I think <laughs> if it if it's where if it if I think where it took place is when I had to visit the other, when I came to visit the other day. Yeah, those stairs are fucking dangerous. Oh god, which bit of Oakley? The the part of the stairs where uh, I set this. It's by the church. Oh, right. the interjunction uh, between uh, Church Street and. Newbrook Street. Mm, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, there are like three churches. The stone steps by the fish and chip shop. Yeah. No, I, I know. Yeah, um... yeah, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. dead. Very dead. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel just asks if I have been, hey, can you go, quickly go over just to check? I didn't do a manslaughter. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The uh... Ilkley Pusher. <laughs> I was That's thinking it. Such a lame name. <laughs> the Ilkley Pusher. <laughs> the Olicana Shubber. That's better. That's a better name. I, <laughs> that's, that's I, a name I'm not gonna lie. No, that's a I, name. I, I, I like it, it only because kid. the first. I say I like it only because the first half sounds like Alucard. <laughs> the Alucard a pusher. Fun fact for listeners: Ilkley's Roman name was Olicana. Yeah, that's so not fun at all. Correct. And the fish chips told me. <laughs> Fish chips. The fish and chip shop Tom was referring to used to be all a kind of fish shop, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Although it had a big um, what, uh, what do you call uh, not a curtain, but like a thing over the um oh, and, place uh, where the name of the shop you? was, and it just said fish and chips. Yeah. I f- I feel like you could really upset someone if if you just were hanging out with them one day and you said, "Hey, you want to go get some chips and fish?" Oh, I already yeah, hate it. Or <laughs> you miss out the end and just say fish chips. <laughs> want to get some fish chips? <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> oh, please do continue, Tom. <laughs> uh, right, Amy, um, so she says she's fine except for a large headache and then invites Ben in because friend of Rachel's, friend of hers, whatever. Immediate thirst. 
I so that's see Rachel you... got some. Now I am first. Well, she would be first if she had a lot to drink last night. <laughs> that that is true. Also, the blood loss. Oh, uh... <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't that, comment that on that one. I've never suffered. You get when you wake up after being concussed. <laughs> <laughs> the mad concussed lust. When your vision blurs Con- permanently. Concussed lust. I love it. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, oh. uh... Uh, but as Ben goes in, he notices a uh, A4 piece of paper that has burn marks down the side that is on um, on the table. And he goes over it to it and is like, what's that? Amy says it's nothing, but before she can stop him reading it, he picks it up oh, and reads it aloud. It's, I was going to say, it's the break It's a mother's letter. divorce note from her. It's, <laughs> it's the mum's it's breakup said. letter. It's right. not the mum's breakup letter. Isn't it? No. Oh. This is a different piece of paper, uh, which has burn marks down the side. Her dad's breakup letter. Was it used for drugs? But Amy didn't the take drugs. On it. Didn't she? No, it was Rachel. No, she was on oh, drugs and shudder. then refused them. That was it. Yeah. As we all know, cocaine makes you a mad shudder. I mean, yeah. I mean, what, sir? What's uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> what the note, in fact, says is, um, Ben reads it aloud. It says... Look out for me, I'm coming for you. In a, like, are we talking like big words, like, drawn with an angry left hand? That is something. Yeah, probably. I can picture this A4 paper with burn marks and writing. The, the thirsty episode. Yeah, like, the, the note takes up the whole piece of paper, even though it's just a few words. Angry and scratchy. <laughs> it just and... turns up with, like, an A, it's an A2 pa- piece of paper, and it's just got six tiny words in the centre. <laughs> No, no, like one at like, the top right corner. <laughs> it's like, the, yeah, those memes. <laughs> look at the top right corner. Now look it at unra- the It unravels corner. like a scroll, and it's just there, and it's only got six words on it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna slightly take... charred. Oh. I'm, I'm confused tablet. as to why it's slightly charred, though. Um, imagine she tried to burn it and failed. Like, did... How the fuck do you fuck up burning something? I don't know, you use a tiny candle? Actually, it's what? How Once it catches fire, them? how did Drake try to burn it? Because I'm assuming it was it's from Drake. Because obviously David is dead. Rip, rip Edgeboard. Yeah. Rip the Actually, yeah, because she it, what, it was Drake. She turned down, I think, wasn't it? Well, she didn't buy drugs yeah. from Drake. Drake, Drake, made she, that, Drake yeah, that's um, what I meant. Drake offered her drugs. She refused, and then punched him in the face. That was it. And and then he tried, and he sold it to Mike Ethan and said, "Please buy drugs, or I'll get shot." He went, "Oh, okay." And then, <laughs> and then it turned out the one that was going to shoot him got shot anyway. So, wait, didn't Drake exactly. follow Amy back to her house? Go, yeah, now I know you live, man. And, and then, then took we... off on a full he followed the, the other, other two yes. carrying and her. And then very hand. quickly caught up with Mike Ethan. <laughs> and then very quickly caught up yeah, with oh, yeah, <laughs> Elliot. Teleport powers. <laughs> he does. He's he like a... via the oh. draw. It's like jump a bit. So um, Ben is concerned about uh, this note that he's found, but Amy uh, passes it off as just some kid playing a prank. Ben is still a little skeptical, but is like, uh, whatever, takes a word for it. Whatever. Do you want to fuck? <laughs> they... <laughs> is that what happens? <laughs> That's not what happens. Ah. <laughs> Whatever. Do you want a loving relationship? Yes. That's... <laughs> well, they do then start to uh, yeah. tell each other about themselves and um, I'm sorry, that find common ground in the fact deal. that they are both children of divorce. Huh. Oh. Oh. I don't think they were both dead. divorced from their parents. <laughs> I don't both... think I've met... It's just Ben's now a wandering nomad and she lives in an abandoned house. <laughs> Oh, well, that sounds like the perfect. That sounds like a sitcom Join idea. Our commune. <laughs> I was gonna say I've never oh. met two kids who are divorced who have like gotten to know each other by discussing divorcedness. Well, you do now. They're called Ben and Amy. <laughs> My God, they're fictional. <laughs> ah, it's almost like it's Fiction Week. Uh, oh my God! Imagine. So um, they basically share the stories of uh, their parents' respective divorce. Ben says that even though he had a good relationship with both of his parents, uh, his mum still got sole custody, and uh, that's the reason he and his mum moved back. So his mum's going to dictate uh, if he goes to heaven or hell. He also says, and I'm pretty sure this is not how courts work, he says the court told him and his mum that they had to move back to England. 
Don't be that's okay. You divorce. No, you divorce this man in Ireland. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. I mean, we don't know. His mother might have done something in Ireland and been exiled. <laughs> and now's not the time to make religion jokes. Who, you were the one who said if she goes jokes. to heaven and hell. Yeah, because she had soul custody. Come on. Okay. Oh. Custody of soul. Jesus. Yeah. I like how all three of us took a moment for that one, yeah. I just didn't think I cared enough. Uh, anyway, that's a good joke about anything that comes out my mouth. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, sorry. That's good. Yeah. Uh, ben said it was a, a difficult to like be in the proceedings and see his dad get told that he wasn't allowed to see him anymore, even though uh, they had a fairly good relationship. Uh, but Amy oh, one-ups him, uh, revealing her dad my was My mother divorced me. Who, <laughs> who very openly <laughs> was not very nice and said uh, in court that he... Uh, didn't want custody. Good lord. Why have you made yeah. Amy's life so Man, shit. Amy's life is is worse than I remember. <laughs> she needs to suffer. <laughs> Do you know Amy? Some good things will happen to Amy. Have you have you it turns out she's gonna Amy be the one person at the end that's like actually them. alive despite the concussion that should have definitely killed her. Ignore well, turns the out the concussion is broken and caved in. It turns out the concussion sent her to the hospital, which revealed the brain tumor and saved her life. Oh. Anyway. Oh. But yeah, as uh, as Amy is telling Ben uh, this, uh, she accidentally slips up and says her parents, plural, don't care about her, oh. which Ben catches uh, and and asks, asks her about it. But she then deflects by just saying, "Oh yeah, no, sometimes my mum doesn't understand me or know what I like." Yes. Uh, typical teenage angst. Teenage angst. I'm just, I'm just wondering what happens in like a week. The... Yeah, how long's her mum been? Because even though like he has not is, been is abandoned, she, is she paying the electricity? Has she sold the house? What's going? What's, what's going on? I can very confidently tell you those issues will not be addressed. Good. Wait. Good. So, okay, so we're not addressing the power and payment of bills, but we are going to address where her mum is, or just is her mum just that was just a thing that never got well, up. maybe. Well, maybe we'll see. That's season I mean, two. Let's continue. It's only been a day. But... Don't tell me there's a season two. Oh god, there is not a season two. <gasps> I don't know. There if was I'm going to be, but I never that. got to it. <laughs> season two, Elliot, Murder Man Extraordinaire, Italian edition. Five. Oh, oh my god, it's just like fucking. Season two. What the fuck happened in Italy? <laughs> don't say it's a freak show. <laughs> we just changed you just changed characters to a whole new series it, it goes to what was his name Hugo it's just the smash cut of Hugo getting murdered by Drake you mean Victor Victor I was going to say you mean Victor Hugo <laughs> there was no Hugo. Hugo I don't think I don't where I pulled Hugo yeah. from. I mean they share one letter yeah so they're going to go on a date yes a date a date date they go and touch each other's butt sure if they're Eventually. Provided one of them criteria. doesn't die. We can't discuss that. They are underage. Let's continue. No, Matt can. We can't. But... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, That's already on a list. Tom, oh, when, when you, when you did, uh, Corby, when you did that, you like did like a weird little elbow, like elbow to the side, and at the same time Tom laughed. So it was like, well, it looked like you generally went, hey, and you were like, hey. I would just like to clarify that this is a misconstrued statement that has no bearing on anything. So after uh, bonding over their uh, shared trauma, they say uh, that they feel like uh, for some reason they can tell each other this stuff, even though they haven't really told their respective uh, friend groups all that much about it. Uh, and Amy asks if they can meet up and chat about stuff again, and then asks like a date. And Amy says, "Sure, why not?" Essentially, so they agree motherfucker. <laughs> to go on a date. Yes, just make sure you fix that gaping head wound before. Can bit, I just ask, a like, brain there. <laughs> a- Amy's Amy's friend circle. I'm right in thinking it's just her and Rachel, right? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. And we can judge by yeah, Rachel only, uh, pushing her down a staircase. That but, yeah, the, the amount of mur- the murder attempts and friends is currently a perfect Venn. Like, it's, it's just a circle. It's, it's just, just a circle. A circle. <laughs> yeah. Wait, give it a minute. I'm sure Drake will end up on it. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Oh. So they're meeting up for a date. I'm sure some good stuff does happen to Amelia. <laughs> I'm sure of it. 
Her I mom just doesn't think eat what it is. <laughs> She's put out of her suffering. That's the oh nice God. thing that happens. Oh, it's delicious. Sorry. Harry O'Daniel saves her from the Kelpies. In our next scene, we catch up with uh, everyone's favourite double-barreled name lad, Mike Ethan. Uh, no. Can't find me, Dad. I'm, I'm not in the jungle anymore. I've got, I've got rid of the double He's barrel. The it's it's just one name for me now. It's just Mike Ethan. Mike Ethan. Mike Ethan. Mike Ethan. That's all it is. As I say, it, the more you say it, the more it does become more Irish. Mike Ethan. Mike Ethan. Eventually, Ethan. everyone in this show will just become Irish because we will keep doing accents. <laughs> the old Daniel. Like people who get progressively worse <laughs> head wounds, which turn them Irish. Everyone who meets ben. Harry will just slowly become Irish. Ben, you left Ireland, but Ireland never left ye. <laughs> just, like, just like the curse around him. <laughs> Just an Irish flag suddenly drapes his shoulders and the national anthem starts playing from nowhere in particular. What is the Irish national I anthem? I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't That's know bad. I'm, I'm part Irish. I should know. Insert national anthem here. No, they get ca- they get. Yeah, that was a great national anthem. One of my favourites. Oh, just a bit where the trumpets attack the guitars. Oh. Well, there's, there's guitars in it. <laughs> Anyway, where cool were we? For a national anthem. Uh, so Mike Ethan goes to visit Jenny, uh, wanting to hang out uh, because his parents are arguing and he wants to get away from that. Any idea Jenny, what they're arguing about? But I just FYI? Uh, yes, we will get to that. Oh, wait, oh, no, okay. sorry. Well, but he's, sorry well, his dad's got a shotgun and his mum is trying to stop him from murdering him yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear, but I have to go to the alcohol store. You cannot stop me. <laughs> I need to work. With this gun. Also, Mike should is... come. It's good work it's experience. That we'll find out what the argument is actually about. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, Mike Ethan, catch up uh, with Jenny. Wah. Yeah. Uh, Jenny asks him if he thinks Ben would be good to date. Mike Ethan nervously says, I wasn't planning on dating him. And then Jenny says, I didn't mean you, you idiot. I meant me. What? What was he planning on doing to him? <laughs> Wait, who's asking him this? Sorry. Mike Eve. J- Jenny, Jenny is asking Mike Jenny, Ethan. Jenny, Jenny. All right, cool. All right. And we're gonna oh, get, we're gonna shit! Get, we're gonna I, get see. <laughs> I see. I see. What? I see. Somebody get I see. and blow it. Yeah. Hmm. So I Jenny see what has you a crush did, on Dar. Ben. Mike Ethan also has a crush on Ben, but is in the closet. And Amy has just agreed to go out with Ben. So Ben's a popular the line of Ben being hot is continuing through the He's episodes. hot and new. Look at it. He shines like the sun. He's fresh. I was about to say fresh. <laughs> I like you, Gorby. <laughs> fresh meat. <laughs> He's also, back like on the menu, boys. John, that statement implies you didn't like Corby before. I'm reinforcing it. I said it to my, my mates I really like. What? Meat? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, he's just after your fries, Corby. There is a lot I've there. already got meatballs, thank you. Anyway, are they Irish? We are, we are <laughs> ten... Irish. Ah, oh, yes, the famous Irish <laughs> delicacy. <laughs> Meatball. Uh, we the are famous ten... Irish delicacy, not potato. He is drinking Magnus, <laughs> so I guess it's kind of Irish. I'm quarter Irish. Fuck off. Okay, we're tangenting hard. Let's keep going. We yeah. always do. We're at 49 minutes. This is great. Okay. We can yeah. probably cut some of this. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, in response to Jenny saying that she has a crush on Ben, Mike Ethan then says, uh, it's fuck good off that she mine. feels like she can say it. <laughs> <laughs> pulls out his dad's gun that he took. <laughs> he says, uh, be, and I quote, It's a Mexican bag. standoff over Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I think it's good you can admit it because secrets and lies only slow down what's left of your life. Sorry, when did he Then he says, back? What are you talking about? <laughs> Why is this Mike is... Ethan 62 <laughs> and a war vet? Yeah, I don't know. The ghost of Edgar Allan Poe just possessed him for a moment. <laughs> I, I, mean... I was going to say, like, no one's watched this show, but, like, he became oh. the protagonist for my teen romantic comedy snafu. <laughs> John, I can answer your question. Yeah. His dad's been hunting him for months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jenny does um, that. call out that is a weird thing to say and says, why did you say that? Do you have a secret? Uh, and, Je- and then Mike Ethan says, in response to the question, have you got a secret? 
Nope, nope, no Peruni. I have no secrets at all. I want everyone to know who I am. I trust him. Well, spoken I like mean, a man who has no secrets. I mean, secrets. he's not wrong. He just needs to fucking tell them. It's yeah. oh, such a common phrase. Jenny, like, um, how could you not believe it? Well, Jenny then uh, says that she's glad he doesn't like secrets because he's because de she's definitely going to tell Ivy that he just said the word no Peruni. Way. <laughs> Sucks to be you, Mike. <laughs> That's fine, I'm gay. Shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then we catch up with uh, Rachel and Harry. Oh, they wow. are in Rachel's kitchen, and Rachel is grabbing a box of cereal. Never so mind. she got it, to make a cereal. <laughs> I was about to make a joke, and then I realized I don't know if that's going too far. Never mind. All right, I was thinking about Kelpies, and I was about to make a bridal comment, and then decided that it's probably too kinky. <laughs> Ride okay. me like a Kelpie, but oh. not like that. That will kill you. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Into the water. <laughs> so, um, in this scene, we get a pretty glaring continuity error. Oh, in the good. last episode, there was a lot of talk about uh, a secret draw. In oh. this episode, for some reason, it's miraculously become a cupboard. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> its powers are too great. <laughs> it's, it's expanded. <laughs> it's a shape-shifting... Is it a mimic? Oh, my... I was about to say. It's a fucking mimic. <laughs> hmm. so yeah, as, as so Rachel is... Um... Has the, secret, the secret gambling stash, which is actually the mimics. And the only reason the mimic doesn't eat the people in the house is because they let him gamble. <laughs> Look, it's a gamble to put your hand in a mimic anyway, so... <laughs> that is true. Uh, but yeah, Rachel is putting away the cereal box and her, uh, the cupboard uh, swings open. Uh, and she says delicious. that her dad's work, uh, just because of like the movement of rummaging around in the adjacent cupboard. Yeah, it will do. Also, just move around the floorboards and shit, it will just swing open. Yeah. Uh, and Rachel says that it's her dad's work cupboard, which he always keeps locked, and it's strange that it is unlocked. Wow, that is an incredible continuity error, because David had to go upstairs and open a desk drawer. No, he didn't. Was it not upstairs? It, wa it was in the kitchen. No, it was upstairs. It was in the kitchen. I was imagining it was in the kitchen. upstairs. Oh, was Matthew it had it. Matt, it turns out Ew. Matt was having more of a fever dream on the last fiction episode than Clearly. any of the rest of us thought. And Amy was. Yeah, but she was bleeding from oh. the head. We don't I, know I, if I, Matt I suffered it. the head injury, but... Honestly, Matt, honestly Matt, the heat strike episode... You have I no webcam. Are you up. bleeding from the head? Um, sure. No one knows, <laughs> no one knows what happened that red. episode until I go back to edit it. <laughs> oh. Uh, after seeing that the cupboard is uh, unlocked and open, Rachel worries one more that someone might have broken in last night. Harry again tries to calm her down, saying her dad probably just forgot to lock it. But Rachel says My he dad wouldn't hasn't forget been home his work weeks. is very confidential. <laughs> My dad hasn't been home in weeks. There are no adults here. Uh, you say that. This is like Lord of the Flies, but in Ilkley. <laughs> Shit. Someone she also says you. that uh, she's pretty sure the keys are not where she left them last night. And that is when Rachel and Simon's parents arrive home. I was saying, there's a I... Kelpie Hunter car outside. Do you think we have a problem? <laughs> no, oh I shit, I, I need to leave. I love the idea the parents walk in and just go, Oh, hi, Rachel. Hi, kids. Oh, hi, Harry. Oh, Daniel. I just noted this. <laughs> <laughs> just open the door. Sorry, like, I know, I've been gambling with him for months. I mean, wait, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is 35. <laughs> Oh. Just got the parents open the door and like, wait a minute, is that world-renowned famous Kelpie hunter, we've Harry got or Daniel? Stop saying he's that age simply because the fact he yeah. has banged a teenager. It's yeah, we really need. I do want to clarify: Harry is sixteen. I doesn't know if that makes it better. Probably not. Also, yeah. we'll just ignore my bad grammar in that sentence. <laughs> uh, so Rachel and parents. Uh, wait, nope. <laughs> Rachel and Simon's parents. <laughs> Rachel and son. <laughs> New business we're opening up. That, one, that one's staying in. <laughs> Rachel, who is this boy? I have no idea, Mother. I just returned with you. Uh, Rachel and Simon's Ra parents arrive. Yeah, they open the door and it, Rachel's on the other side of the door with them and yeah, Rachel's no, in the house with yeah. Harry O'Daniel. No, no, the, the second they open the door, Harry O'Daniel says, look, she's gone. She's oh. left the door. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> 
I prefer the their idea names... that there are two Rachels. <laughs> their names are Connor Cobstern and Chloe Cobstern. Only Connor enters the kitchen, uh, Chloe goes somewhere else. And Rachel then confesses to him that she forgot to lock up last night and is concerned there may have been a break-in. Harry's just there. Uh, <laughs> Harry is just there, leaning on a counter. Awkwardly. Like, let's go hit IT crowd levels of leaning. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, yeah, I would say that. Oh. That's all well and oh. good, daughter. You forgot to lock up, but who is this mystery man? <laughs> He's got, like, that wanted poster where his face should be. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that get there? Must be the wind. <laughs> Harry's just looking at the poster of himself. It's like, I look nothing like this. <laughs> you know, it would be flattering if it weren't for the big word wanted at the top. <laughs> oh, I am wanted. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh so uh, Rachel confesses that um, she forgot the keys and then uh, Connor takes a while to gather his thoughts and uh, eventually calms down and says the important thing is that Rachel and Simon are safe. He tells her to have a look upstairs and see if anything is missing. So she and Harry go. I like how they have Once alone, that Harry's there. <laughs> yeah, they don't really didn't really interact with uh, Wait, Mr. Cobbs there. Can only Rachel see Harry? No yeah, I was going to say, has Harry. Rachel just banged her imaginary friend? <laughs> Imagine. She did. Uh, she so did. Once alone... <laughs> I'm, I'm Once, slowly um... becoming more and more concerned that, like, <laughs> just after Tom's reaction, it's like, oh shit, that's the case. <laughs> Once alone, um, uh, Mr. Cobstern, Connor Cobstern, begins frantically searching through the cupboard, but does not find what he is looking for. Oh no, somebody took my secret gambling stash. Ah, ah. <laughs> oh no, someone took my. Nothing. Like nothing. <laughs> no, is your secret gambling stash gone? No, oh, no, dearie, you've lost your secret gambling stash. <laughs> I love how did everyone did this... know? Put it next Why to the cornflakes, I... dear. You oh. didn't hide it well. Ironically, your poker face is not that good. <laughs> then we catch up with Elliot and Ivy on their first official date. Meryl. Which would be sweet if Elliot hadn't killed a man not 24 hours previous. I'm assuming he doesn't bring it up. He does not. It's a conversation killer. As what? he... Uh... Being a killer often is a conversation killer. Depends who. Depends on the circle you Hello, are. Hello, I'm Elliot. I just killed a man and this conversation. And Goodbye. Just picturing airplanes <laughs> like Ivy. Have you ever killed a grown man? <laughs> is he still Why does he sound like the guy from Airplane? The hippo hat. No, because the deal was... <laughs> He's not still wearing the hippo hat. Good, then he's safe. <laughs> For now. Oh. Who is this hippo vigilante murdering people? It's actually uh, a ratatouille situation. There's a rat under there puppeteering him. What are you going to say? It was a hippo? It was just a hippo under, <laughs> under there. <laughs> a really small hippo. One of those hungry, hungry hippos. How, how would a hippo grab... The hair strands to. I don't question it. Now I'm just picturing a hippo with human hands, and I'm upset. Oh, oh why? No. It was. It mm. was bad enough when we oh. had the Cravendale advert with the cats with thumbs that started a gang. Oh, it's worrying to see like a hippo doing like a forward crawl after you. Oh, John, mm. why would you put that image in my head? So well, Elliot and I we meet is... at the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> the most romantic of locations. Well, that's just where they're meeting. That's not where their date's taking place. <laughs> that's what she thinks. We're going to ride the bus. <laughs> Do you want to sing the song? The wheels on the bus go round and round. I killed a man. I killed a man. Oh, God, I fucking killed a man. I'm suffering from PTSD. <laughs> that's how it goes, right? <laughs> oh, yes, a classic. <laughs> the body's oh, on the bus Just go. can't sing along. PTSD. <laughs> uh, the barrel of the gun goes bang, bang, bang. Uh, they agree to have their date at a, ne a nearby um, cafe. Uh, and Ivy uh, playfully grabs him and uh, by the arm and brings him along. But that uh, makes Elliot have a flashback to the previous night where David grabbed him. And he sort of freezes up a little. <laughs> Ivy asks him what's wrong, but he shakes it off as nothing. <laughs> Not used to being out without my hippo. It's okay. 
It's my. I'll get used to it. <laughs> it's me or the oh. hippo, Elliot. You must choose. You know what I choose. <laughs> <laughs> hippo out. Uh. Oh. So they go uh, to the cafe, and uh, Ivy's being uh, quite um, jokey and unhappy, but Elliot isn't really responding. Um, she makes a joke, uh, for example, about uh, a waiter who serves them who has a very posh voice, but Elliot doesn't join in. And she again is like, okay, something's bothering you. What is it? All the waiters in Oakley have Elliot... a posh voice. What's the issue? <laughs> <laughs> this one is particularly posh. Oh dear. <laughs> you can see the spoon coming out of the nets. So posh, even posh people think he's posh. Oh my. Down to nabby posh. Oh, la- <laughs> landed gentry posh. <laughs> Have, has never been in their own kitchen posh, oh. which is, begs the question of why they're a waiter. So again, um, Eilie, uh, Ivy uh, questions him on like why he's being grumpy and distant, uh, but he says he's just probably had too much to drink and he's still hang- hungover. How does she know how he she acts? Tries... She met him like huh? two days ago <laughs> and has had three interactions before this. She met him yesterday, actually. It's a whirlwind love story, Corby. You... It's gotta get on. Board. As, as just program. happened, this this I mean, barely twenty four hours has passed in this whole story, right? That is correct. It's been a day and a half ish. It's probably coming up to It'll the twenty four hour point in this scene. Yeah, I would say. So yeah, um, she then tries to cheer Elliot up uh, by telling him he's her hangover cure, oh. uh, which does lift his spirit, and hey. uh, he then joins in with her joke at the waiter's expense. You're right, he is a twat. Just, <laughs> just imagining the waiter getting very sad in the background of the scene. Sad posh noises. A single tear drips down from the monocle. Not out of his eye, out of the monocle. Well, the monocle's over his eye. I was, I was picturing a monocle in either eye. Just yeah. like he's still posh, he has a monocle for both eyes. Only peasants oh. wear glasses, we wear dual monocles. So Elliot does join in with a joke and seems to be... Uh, more, more upbeat, uh, but even so, there is a bit where he looks worried, and that is where the scene ends. Oh, and that is where the ad break was... will come for this episode. Wonderful. And we will go to a close. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Disclaimer. Uh, that what do you disclaimer. think's going to happen next? Disc- disclaimer: We don't have an ad break. No. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm saying ad break because it's it's split in half, as though there were an ad break, uh, and yeah. the next half of the episode will be in the next fiction week. Honestly, Tom, I cannot predict what's going to happen next. It's You've curveballed us at the end of episode two, and now I don't know what to think. I, I still like to believe that Harry O'Daniels is Rachel's imaginary yes, friend. Nobody no one commented on He's in the next scene. the only one who's seen him. I know, but no one else has spoken to him. I know. Oh. Or acknowledge, like... Oh, is I, I don't. Maybe I. Maybe I'd just be a better parent than all of the parents in this show. But well, Colby, if it's I not came hard, on, just be there. Well, I mean, there's only been two parents show up in the show so far. I've worked. Well, they're the best ones so I've far. Worked, but I've worked it out. Rachel obviously can see Simon, and Simon is a Simon. Simon is a Kelpie, so that implies that Rachel and Simon are mythical. And because Harry O'Daniels is a Kelpie hunter, he's also technically mythical, and that's why she can see him in people who aren't mythical. Uh, what I'm reckoning is he's the ghost of a Kelpie hunter who's training the new generation to hunt them, and that's did why Kelpie, she can see him. Did Kelpie drown him. Yeah, he failed at the last challenge. He killed not countless Kelpies, but not this one. This one's cunning. <laughs> and that's the death of the bridal. <laughs> I, I just oh. like to think that when you say this one, it's cunning. It's just Simon being an idiot and also just managing to outwit him that way. He just tripped over and took him into the pond with him. I should never have faced you in a swamp. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a fucking dumb move. <laughs> I should not have that, faced that's, you that's that's your your problem. in the ocean. I should have faced you on land. I, I am loving the fact that some weeks yeah, it's not know. that rippable and other weeks it's just a total mess. <laughs> To be fair, though, we, yeah, have this... had, we have had the entire murder plot to riff upon now. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. True. This episode is, serves as somewhat of a breather from the, um, the climax the of last episode. Bl- blowing of Elliot's proverbial load. <laughs> and Harry Daniels. And the majestic <laughs> Harry Daniels, who is my favourite character, followed closely by Mike Ethan, mainly because of his name and the, the dad hunting. Name. I like Mike Ethan's dad <laughs> just because the law we've made around him. <laughs> <laughs> we must go to the alcohol shop. 
This is my alcohol oh. shop. <laughs> also, yeah. I love the fact that the and... secret gambling stash belongs to Rachel's dad, and Rachel, uh, Rachel's dad, a grown man, labeled it secret gambling stash. <laughs> yeah. I kept it in the kitchen and not in his room or somewhere, or his office or somewhere that's safe. You, that's where you'd expect it. True, but then. Oh, it's in the kitchen. Cunning edge lords like Dave sneak in and open Dave. cupboards. David. Is it David? I was going to say fucking Dave. I mean, he Dave. could have gone by Dave. He could have gone, but he didn't. Well, I imagine he wouldn't have liked it. No, no. he wouldn't. He, he would have shot you. Why? Wait, who's shooting Dave? who? David uh, is my name. David, Look, Dave, shoot you. Uh, Do you reckon that's why David <laughs> error, shot his parents or whatever? Whoever it was he killed. Um, because he killed they called him yeah. Dave. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we'll find out more David, about it later. Not, no, no, no. Just, oh, is yeah. there going to be an episode where we go to Italy? The flash. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> it's called Everything One Small in Italy Town, not One Small the Continent. <laughs> one Small <laughs> Continent. <laughs> that's, that's season three. That's, we, we upgrade from oh. One Small Town to One Small Country. So one Small Town, one small, count, one small City, One Small County, One Small Country, One Small Continent, One Small World. <laughs> One small galaxy. <laughs> After all. One small universe. Hey. That's it a, is a sm- nine series. No, I reckon you could, if, a, if, if we had a solar system, you could fit another one in there. That's true. It yeah. is a small world after all. Yeah. I guess if you woke out, what, there, broke down... You the, woke. One you small ionosphere. <laughs> oh. Anyway, Corby, please take us into your anime oh. nightmares. I Sorry. mean... I mean, this week wasn't a nightmare. I will fully admit. After punchline, I don't think I could. I've worked out where the line lies before. As to the line what is being too you don't ridiculous. Know what you're talking about. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ! I just opened my other monitor and I'm like, I forgot this is white. Left side starts melting. I mean, I am I'm perfectly embodying the duality of man right now. You are the card change of hearts. Banned in tournaments. <laughs> He does he does a Seto Kaiba cosplay that's just too strong. Go around telling people what Pot Agreed does. Oh god. <laughs> you take too long to explain your card plays. I mean I mean of the four of us, I feel like I would make a good Seto Kaiba. He spent one minute just discussing how a trap card works without the other person hearing. Hmm. Some big good Pegasus. I think I'd be a good Yugi's grandfather. Okay. <laughs> no. You, you, I I would agree, but you. I don't think you'd be getting good at kidnapped. No. I feel like you, you like he gets kidnapped in the first episode of the. He uh, does. It's like yeah, no one could kidnap John anyway. I'm Thank you Joey. for that. As much as I don't want to admit, I'm probably Joey. <laughs> oh, no. uh, that's it. I'm, 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 I have I'm not yeah, seen I'm enough Yu Gi Oh to say who I am. I'm Yami, but I'm not Yugi. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're Joey, Matt, can you give us your best Brooklyn accent before we carry on? Oh God, what the, what the fuck does a Brooklyn accent sound like? Hey, hey come I'm on! Walk, I'm, I'm walking, walking here. here. I'm walking here. Wow, <laughs> wow, Luigi from. I'm walking here. <laughs> Famous wow. Brooklyn like Waluigi. <laughs> oh god, that reminds me of the video I showed you guys of <laughs> Oh baby but Dukes, my sister. <laughs> She's in darkness now. <laughs> We're not quit that. Oh she can't help her. Right. She can't help her? Oh. She can't help her, yes. Oh god. Ah. FYI Tom, I'm like there's like half an hour before I'm probably gonna have to stop, so let's let's crack on. Half an hour to forty minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this is going to take too long because, after, as I say, after last episode, I realized I should probably dial this back a bit. So, I also... <laughs> you were going to say? I think Punchline would have been fine with an actual fucking script or some shit because I think it was that kind of anime you need some, that, that, some sort of like Oh yeah, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking... Off the top of my head, I can't talk about that show. I probably should have actually made a script, but fuck that. I've never That's scripted fine. anything. Heat episode. That don't give a shit. Effort. Hmm. And I prefer trying to recall these things from memory, just because it just proves oh, how yeah. much of a weeb I am. That's fair. Hmm. It's all anyway. about self-proving. 
I mean, you'll be surprised in the anime fandom. Like a good bit of bread. Uh, that's good too. Mm, bread. Like a good waifu. <laughs> yes, waifu. Uh, I appreciate it in the bakery, son, John. <laughs> Someone Speak, does. I was about to say, speaking of waifus, and then I realized that's a terrible segue. <laughs> This is mine. You mean there aren't any waifus in this anime you're going to talk about? Uh, outrageous. Uh, I mean, there are some pretty good ones, but there is only one true waifu. Well, as there is with every show. Anyway, as I said at the end of the punchline rant, I think I said I was probably going to talk about this this week. Which, disclaimer, side tangent, whatever. Uh, was really hard to focus on because I actually got a VPN and I looked at American Crunchyroll and there's like way more shit on there than there is in the UK one. This is where they're hiding the good stuff. Like, you, you joke, but... Like, Mexican heroin. Like, this this was on, like, American Crunchyroll, but thankfully it was, on UK, it was on UK Netflix, so all was fine. Nice. Uh, I could, I could, and besides, I own a Blu-ray of this one. That's how much ah. I actually like this series. Oh. I own, like, four anime DVDs, and this is one of them. Huh. Mainly because I actually... Blu-rays are expensive. Anyway... Yeah. As teased at the end of last episode, I today am talking about Love, Tuna Bio, and Other Delusions. Which, now that I say it out loud, is probably my autobiography. Not the sidetrack, Tom. I was trying oh, to work out love. if you were wearing a knee pad or not. Because if your trouser leg looked a bit like a weird knee brace. <laughs> Can I just my... clarify the title is Love, Tuna, Bio, and, and Other Stuff? <laughs> no, no. What no. Was it? Uh, tuna Bio is one word. It's a Japanese nonsense, I believe. Yeah, it's, oh, right. it's... it roughly translates to adolescent syndrome. That's how you spell it oh, in Discord. Oh, good God. <laughs> it's fine. They're secretly a 300-year-old vampire or some shit, is it? No. Uh, oh, is that no, not worse? Uh, Chunibyo is the one where, due to something that's happened to someone, they act out in a different way than most people normally would to deal with. Most of the time, it's to like um... deal with something that's happened in the past. Like, this is... The girl in this one is the notable example of Tunibios, but others include, like, there's the main character from Steins Gate. He's a pretty big Tunie. There's one in... I forget the name of... The, there's one in Snafu, my teen romantic comedy, but there's a... They're pretty well known. There's a... Right. As J Japanese stereotypes go, these are, like, high tier. Unfortunately... Due to the way I misheard it at first, I am now just imagining a tuna fish in like a shirt with with sweaty pits. The one the worst smells ever, apparently. Uh, mm. That would be a pretty bad smell. Anyway, Somebody just I, lathered themselves in tuna mayo. I, I was gonna. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Fucking weirdos. Anyway, I will I will preface this with the disclaimer that this is. It's not my favorite anime of all time, but it's definitely, like, up there as one of my favorites. And I didn't realize there was a season two until I went on American Crunchyroll. So we get so tired in a seven sausage octopuses. You are. Ah. You're going to get, like... I, I feel confident in giving already just out of the bat. This is, like, a nine. This is, like, an easy nine. I don't know if I could possibly call it a ten, but it is great. Um, right. so, also, side tangent as well. Uh, this was one of the works done by Kyoto Animation, who, for those of you that don't know, was it last year or a year, a year and a half ago, somewhere around that? That was the Japanese anime studio that someone went into and set fire to. Yeah, Probably. that was... Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, this was those. They do amazing works. I love pretty much everything KyoAni puts out, uh, which is what it's abbreviated to. For a record, the everyone out there and for the people on this show. Uh, popular ones they've done is they made uh, well, the one the one everyone on this this will know is they made free Iwatodai Swim Club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they made the original for those, but other popular works they've worked on for people at home, they made the clan ad anime, they made K-On! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. They made Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Violet Evergarden. The, the, this list is just, like, quality. There is not, like, a bad KyoAni anime out there, in my opinion. I believe they were working on the Violet Evergarden film when the horrific things went down, but, yeah, massive fucking... Backlog. Like, yeah, massive backlog. And also, yeah. like, I believe they're only just starting to rebuild and come back, so... Yeah. Oh, that's good that it hasn't, uh... 
shut yeah. them down. The, 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 when I heard that on the news, and I'm just like, everyone else was like, uh, this is tragic. I'm like, you don't understand. These are, these are big players in the anime industry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, it's a one of the mafia dons being shot, apparently. <laughs> Literally, say they're the don ones of. of they, anime. I mean, I mean, with there the is an anime plot unfolding inside this anime studio. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put it past them. The only other people that would recommend what that would possibly be happening is with Studio Madhouse, but <laughs> that they'll find something they've made for another day. But they were the people behind. Madhouse did One Punch season one, I think. Yeah, the ones who are notorious for never doing another season. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's them. Anyway, I love Tuna Beyond and other delusions. Uh, normally I reel off like a list of characters, but I feel like it's just better for me to go through like a couple episodes and just be like, this is what happens because yeah. it's... So, show opens up episode one and there's a boy just about getting ready to... Like, he's clearing out his room, basically. He's taking out some like boxes and putting them on the balcony for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Why he's putting them there. I mean, uh, chuck them away. Like it's yeah, that's in... basically what he's doing. He's ch- he's clearing out like a load of stuff he had as a middle school when he was in middle school, because back in his days of middle school. Oh, by the way, his name's Yuta. I should put that out. Yuta yeah. Tog- Yuta Togashi. He's taking out a load of boxes and like remembering like his time in middle school, where back in the day he suffered from Chunibyo, where like. In, when he was in high school, he was basically made up the spiel that he called himself the Dark Flame Master. Sounds appropriate. Um, I get ready because there's a, a lot more of that shit to come because, he, as I say, he's basically like getting ready to go to high school. He specifically is chose to go to a high school where no one would recognize him because as he's moving into high school, he's gotten over all of that and he's trying to forget it and basically... yeah. Like, go to a school yeah. where no one knows him so he can start afresh. So, he's taking up all this and, like, remembering the times and being like, my god, I was a massive fucking idiot for whatever, for doing this. Like, this is... Why did I act like that? This is massively embarrassing, that kind of deal. I mean, I feel like that's everybody's thinking of what... Uh, like, I, I am definitely relating to that Like, I, I look back at, like... The previous year, when a year old has gone, God, I hate myself. Let's change me. And then I get to the next year, it's like, nope, still bad. Improvement required. <laughs> Install an <I> mean, update. <laughs> Install new update. I mean, like, I still do that, but to be fair, that's because of. Oh, I, I don't. I, I relate to this anime in too many ways, but I'll get to that later. Are we about to have, to have, have a personal deep dive into your psyche. I mean, we can, but Is let this me get. Therapy in disguise. Let me get yes. the rope. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, he's, cl- he's like busy tra- taking out all this stuff. And then like he notices like hanging from the flat above where him- he and his family live, like there's a rope been thrown over the side. Oh, and, yeah. a girl st- and a girl starts climbing down it. Classic anime. Yep. <laughs> I like to imagine if there's like a, there's, like, a coffee in his hand. It's like, yeah, let's just see what this guy's. <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Th- this is how this- they normally leave. <laughs> This girl is best girl, Rika Ta- Takanashi. Takanashi. You will have seen this girl, probably. Uh, let me just find a thing to put in the Discord for y'all. Bef- before anyone's judged me, yes, she is amazing for all the reasons she's in this show, but this is, uh, this is oh. our protagonist. Uh, no, that's uh, part of the, that's part of her gimmick. I will get to that in a bit. But yeah, she's like climbing down. She's, she's like, Trying to climb out of the balcony on, like, trying to lower herself down to the bottom floor, which touches on later on. And he just looks at her, like, sort of, like, helps her down to, like, steady herself on his balcony before she climbs any lower. And then it's just like, what what are you doing? And then she's just like, you saw, didn't you? <laughs> and he's like, wait, what? And then he realizes that as she's descended, she probably means he like looked up her dress, but he th- he thinks that, but she's just like, no, you saw me. You're not allowed to tell anyone I was here, okay? And then she just Coffee leaves, and he's like, me. okay. <laughs> Le- and then just leaves. Well, today is certainly a Tuesday. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it was like... Kicks off the bingo for Tuesday. <laughs> Girl, emptying, emptying out my room, doing dinner... Girl climbing off the balcony. Everything's fine. <laughs> anyway, 
the next day, he's basically starting... It, it, for some reason, every anime opens with you're starting school for some reason. It seems like a classic trope. You're starting high school. Yeah. It, look, like the moment I find an anime to, to talk about that is not set in high school, I will... I know one exists. It's just not good to talk about on this show. Technically, even JoJo. It's Attack on Titan starting school. I mean, they're that age. There is a teacher they're scene. They go with the there, is, there is a school scene. You're right. Anyway, this kid is like basically like going to the train station, and he stood waiting for his train, and he like is just like looking. He realizes he's just like looking down at himself, just making it looks presentable because you know wants to make a good impression on his first day. And then he leans into, he like leans into like a mirror that they have on the thing. And at the same time, he bumps head with, an, with another girl doing the same thing, basically. Uh, disclaimer, it's not Rika. It's, um, which oh. one are you? You saw me it's again. Not... Leave. No, no. That's, that's her. It's, uh, I'm, I, I, it's weird because I, every time I read these wiki pages for names, every, this is a thing in Japan where they refer to everyone as surnames. It's surname, then, fa- then family name, then uh, first yeah. name afterwards, because the family name is more important. But every time I look on the wiki page, it's always the proper way of putting names, like our net way of doing it, not Japanese. <laughs> the proper way, our first way. Name, right? no. First <laughs> name, last name. Way. Okay. Yeah. So I'm looking, yeah, it's, uh, her name is, like, Shinka Nibu- Nibutan. I'm just going to call her Shinka. So, like, she, like, leans in, like, looks at the same thing. They kind of, like, almost, like, butt heads like, trying to look at themselves in the mirror just to make sure they look presentable. And they'll just, like, have a brief conversation. It's like, oh, you go to my school too? It's like, yeah, well, I guess I'll be seeing you around. And then the train pulls in, and just as before Yuta gets on the train, he, like, looks to his right, and he sees Rika there in their school uniform, and she does this thing that I'm sure everyone in life has done at some point, where, you know, you walk up to an automatic door and you do, like, a hand gesture to, like, pretend you forced yeah. it open. Yeah, yeah, like uh, I yeah. do that every single time I go to an automatic door. Oh, you have yeah. seen him do it, yeah. Yeah, she, she does, like, that as the train doors open, and then she just turns, looks at him, and just, like, gives him a smug expression as she gets on the train. And he's just stood there staring. It's just like, what the hell did that girl do? And then he realizes that the train doors have shut and it's leaving. So he get, he misses the train to school because he's too busy staring at this girl. Excellent start. Yeah. Anyway, there's um, a, and then he basically like runs to school, and then he's doing um, he gets just before he like goes into class, he does this scene where he like monologues. He's like, "Okay, no one is allowed to know that you back in your old school were the dark flame master. You repress that part of yourself. <laughs> you got don't let anyone you got know. Just manning himself up." Yeah, that's uh, literally like what that is. He does like a little thing where he pretends to like seal it away because oh, he used to be Tuna Bio. Everybody Wait. in the room next to you just looking at the wall. Like, what the fuck? Does that? Well, st- no. It, does he the still? Only, there's the one person that sees him doing this, and it is Rika. Does he still think he's actually got the Dark Flame Master power? And no, just he knows. Steal it away? He, okay. he knows that in his head it was all made up. Okay. Good. It was like all shit that he made up back in the day. That's better, at least. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'm done with being this Chunibyo nutcase. I'm going to try and be like a normal human being. So then he go- he goes to class, he sits down, and the kid behind him who has... I- I'm not going to lie. As I've watched more anime, this is the, like... I've discovered that Makoto is both a gender-fluid name and is like... The equivalent of like calling your kid Dave in in the UK. <laughs> like you, anywhere you will go, you will find at least one Makoto, mm. and they may or may not be male or female. That does explain that trip to Asda. Anyway, There's um... at least one Makoto wherever you go. <laughs> anyway, he like sits. He sits down. This kid behind him is like, ah, "What up?" Basically, he's like. He's like, you're doing good? Yeah. And then he's like, okay, so what do you think of all the girls in our class? And he's just like, eh, they're pretty all right. And then he looks and he sees that both the girls he ran into, Rika and Shinka, are both in his class. So, like, he originally first stares at Shinka because she's, like, the stereotypical, like, cute girl that everyone yeah. wants to date. <laughs> like, any because uh, Makoto says, like, th- that as well. is like, you've got good tastes. 
Every, like a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. And th and then like he looks at the front and sees that Rika's just kind of sat on her own, and he's just like, oh, she so she's in our class as well. He's like, you know her? No, not really. I mean, she climbed then, out my window this morning, yeah. but other than that. And he, well, he doesn't mention that part. And then, like, out, out of nowhere, she comes over and, like, she's like, so I finally found you at last. And he's like, wait, what? He's like, my Wicked Lord Sh Is it Wicked Lord Shogun? Is that what she calls it? Oh, oh fuck. No. Well, <laughs> I did look... I forget what... I'm looking for what she got... Because she gives it a name. It's like the Wicked Lord Shingen or something. That sounds like, right. Yeah. And he's like, sorry, I, I don't know you. What are you talking about? It's like, our paths were destined to cross, Dark Flame Master. And he's ah, just like, oh, shit. You fucked me. <laughs> oh, you fucked me so hard. <laughs> and then, it, Wait, and then he's she, like, she sorry. was, she, no, she was just around while she saw him do the monologue where he's like, I'm leaving this behind. Right. Gosh, yeah. oh, fuck's sake. And then uh. he's like, I don't know what you're on about. Then she starts doing this routine where... Since I put the picture in Discord, she starts grabbing her eye that's got the eye patch over it. She's just like, my eye, it's responding. It's resonating. Then it... <laughs> yeah. And then it's... I'm not, I'm not going to lie. A, a lot of the appeal of this show is like mild cringe comedy. Yeah. Watching no. her act like this. It's so, a bit always like, sunny like that, yeah. actually. So everyone's, so everyone like because she's like making this scene. Everyone like turns to like look at the two of them, and then Makoto is the bags like you should probably take her to the nurse's office or whatever because she's just like screaming <laughs> she's about her eyes. Screaming and clutching her eyes. <laughs> well, she what she's like she made like a scene where she like was holding her face and fell to her knees. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, so he takes it to the nurse's office and oh. like. The nurse isn't in, so they just like look around for some eye drops or whatever. And he's just so he's just like, look, I don't know, I don't really know you, but don't bring up the dark flame master thing. She's like, got it, I know. You need to keep your identity a secret. No, that's not what I meant. I just need to leave that part of me behind. I want to have a normal high school life. <laughs> and then she's like, and then this goes on for a bit, and then he's like, you, you know, Chunabio is not real, like or whatever. And then she's like. You, she's like my 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 eye my eye my wicked eye and he's like what you and then she's like you want to see and he's just like wait what is this and then she takes like the eye patch off and she's got like a different she's got like a yellow eye as opposed mm. to like her blue one and it like th they do this thing where it like glows and he's just like don't tell me she's like actually powerful or whatever and then there's a bit where she like trips over and she, and basically like she wears a color contact yeah the contact lens falls out yeah <laughs> And then she just like looks at him like kind of embarrassed or whatever. Oh fuck's sake! <laughs> like, yeah, that's a poor quality contact lens. You want those things to stay in. I know, but I, d I don't know. I don't wear contacts or glasses or anything, so I don't know how easy those things are to fall out. No eyes. No. I have no eyes, and I must scream. <laughs> he has mouths where his eyes are. I am Yogg-Saron. <laughs> Yogg-Saron. Yeah. It's a low budget WoW version. That's, that's the war, that's the yeah, that's the that's the Warcraft version. Oh god. <laughs> anyway, where was I? So basically her like after Yeah, her, and basically she does this incredibly adorable thing where she just like pretends to just like she tries to hide her face in embarrassment. She's just like okay, I guess this is just something I'll have to put up with because they like episode 2 thing and it cuts to light and she's just like she, she, they just keep hanging out because she lives in the flat above him. She leaves by the road every morning. No, that's um, that's actually addressing like episode two, where it's something she does because she moved in up in the flat above him, as I say, and she lives with her sister, who, let's just say, they don't really get on because of Rika's Chunibio. Yeah, it'd be hard to live with. Yeah, they. I, I don't I can't go into like Rika without talking about why she's Chunabio, but let's just say it is due to past trauma. Um right. <laughs> due to personal face. reasons. <laughs> due to personal reasons, she's developed Chunabio and everyone else was like thinking she'd be over it, which is a weird thing to say because I'm I'm gonna put in a spoiler warning on screen and just be like obviously yeah, uh, for the, like the next like Spoiler two minutes or whatever. Warning. Yeah, it's about two minutes. Ba basic, Put a time code in the description. Yeah, for uh, people on Spotify. Alert. 
Spoiler yeah, skip, alert. Skip like the next like two or three minutes because I'll probably have wrapped it up by then because it's not like a massive like long thing. Uh, and John starts serenading. It's safe. Basically, um, <laughs> okay. and I'm gonna and the spoilers start here. So basically, like what happened when she was around like, um, like nine ish, nine ten ish. I think I don't. They don't specify her age. She just says she was young, which in Japan terms, I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> Mm, that's a rabbit but, uh, don't go but, yeah, but, could be um, anywhere from one upward but ba- uh so like <laughs> is, a, pe- is anyone younger than one not young <laughs> no they don't exist they're, they're infer- infantile <laughs> okay not in- i almost uh, said time. infertile which is also technically true but <laughs> anyway <laughs> but yeah oh. as i was saying like basically at, like this like youngish age of like eight between eight and ten um, her father basically passed away, like, sudden- to her, suddenly, and to, like, everyone, uh, but, like, to her older sister and her grandparents, like, he had, um, some kind of disease that they knew about, but he didn't want Rika, he didn't want to tell Rika because he knew it would worry her, which, in hindsight, Instead, he just mood. traumatize her. Yeah, great. Yeah, just, like, her, suddenly, one day her father suddenly passes away, or the, or the, you get the trauma of that you live, that knowing that your dad's gonna die soon. It's no, like, six are done, mm. one, half a dozen, uh, what is it, six of one, half a dozen of the other? Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah, it's not great, but anyway, like, this is, like, a thing that she sort of developed to deal with that. So, right. and then, like, that was, as I say, about when she was, like, somewhere between like eight or ten and now she's like moving up into japanese high school which i don't know when japanese japanese kids start high school but i don't hmm. i reckon hold on high let me school. just google japanese high school 13 oh. maybe that i mean about we right. have, they have a middle school we between don't have middle school here well so, some uk schools do yeah but they're yeah. weird and fake it, <laughs> those are fake schools i've just i've just realized that it, according to japan they have uh, three years of junior high and three years of senior high, and considering that there's there's a girl in one of the other characters, there's a girl from like the junior high. I'm assuming they're in senior high. Right. And senior yeah. high is sixteen to eighteen. Right. right. So that's quite a long time to hold on to that. Yeah. Well, she, there's a, a plot point where Rika is apparently looking for these um, what what did she call them? Like the the ba- the I keep calling, want to call them the boundary lines or something, but because that's what she. <laughs> Well, she keeps thinking that, like, it's something that she keeps clinging on to, basically. It's like, her father didn't pass away. He's waiting for her beyond the boundary lines. Gotcha. Which is, and yeah. she's spending her time looking for these boundary lines. You know, so like, she's convincing... crossing the main character's personal boundaries to try and find him. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie, like, you say crossing the boundaries, like, it starts off like she gets on a bit, uh, weird, but, like, she click, she does come off across a bit clingy, but this is, like, one of the best romances I've ever watched. Disclaimer, I've, you, some of you at home may or may not be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised how many animes turn into shitty romances. When's, when's, when's the, sp- are we, end- are we stopping the spoiler thing now? Serenade yeah. bunch. Oh, oh, I've got the lovely bunch of coconuts. There they are, they're standing in a row. It's safe. Hey. <laughs> it's safe. Come by the coconuts. We are out of spoiler territory. I, there's a reason I gave a two to three minute one, because uh, we riffed on it for a bit, but, before we actually went into it. But yeah. So, uh, this, I guess this, her looking for the boundary lines isn't that much of a spoiler, but she just let, just let it be known that she's looking for the boundary lines. Which well, like lines where the dimensions cross or something? She says, I don't remember. Mm. But and ultimately, like y- Yuta originally is just like, okay, just stop being like tuny or whatever. And <laughs> but don't though. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> well, there's a there's a episode two. Like there's a, a there's a scene where it's like she, she like descends down the rope. Like she uses she uses this rope a lot for some fucking reason. As does her sister for some later on down the line. Is it like permanently fixed, or they, do they, they have to tie it up every re- time? They well, use it's it. like it, 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 the balcony and stuff because of how it works. It goes into both the lower room's front room and Yuta's bedroom, right? Because of how the yeah. flats laid out or whatever. Yeah, all right, okay. So there yeah, has been yeah, times. Yes. 
So there has been times where she's just like descended like down to the window. It's just like knocking on the other side, trying to wake him up to go to school. At least that's something. Uh, she's like, fucking leave me. So th- as I say, there's the scene where like basically Rika like finds this stray cat at some point and she brings it home and her sister basically like she can't she, she can't keep it because her sister's allergic to cats. Oh, but she calls her sister the priestess, by the way. Jesus a priestess Christ. that works with the with the uh, with the bureau that is trying to like stop her from doing her magic. No, I'm not it's it's cringe comedy at its finest, but it's I don't fucking. Feel like I'm able to it. riff now that I know why. I know. That's it's like this is funny up until the point where it gets like, oh shit. And then it actually made me cry why at some point. You pick a serious anime. Anime is serious, damn it! It is. Anime is a serious medium. Oh, Anything yeah. KyoAni makes is gold. Clanad gave people PTSD. <laughs> right. It didn't. That was probably Luke making a meme, but it, Corey, it, it is like you're a fuel in, just anime speech. <laughs> I, I I hate it when it, it, it really. I'm not gonna lie. I'm okay. I'm gonna go on a tangent about why people when people don't take anime seriously and just be like, oh, it's just yeah, like I'm... discount. It's just like <laughs> I, I basically the long and short of it serious. is. The long and short of it is, anime is so much more than the hentai people think it is. But luckily it is also that. (laughs) 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 Okay, I'll admit, he's not wrong, but it can be serious when it needs to be. The will draw you in, and then the seriousness keeps you there. I, it's, I, it's I came for the plot the, and stayed for the plot. It's two sides of the of the, hey. of the same coin. It's like it's it is it, I like anime that makes me feel and like anime that makes me feel. So that's uh, that's it's it's good. <laughs> feel, yeah. Oh, well, the, yeah, there's the. I was not saying. I hope when I join the army, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the coast. <laughs> I, get I know. I just like sometimes I just have to have this rant. <laughs> uh, so as I was saying, like there's a. They also do this really cool thing, like, where sometimes, like, her and her sister get into, like, like, fights, in air quotes, where it shows you the fights, but how it looks in Rika's mind. Oh, that's cool. I like that. And so, um... this is, like, KyoAni, um, the, a prime example of another show they do this with is... That's the plot person. of Sucker Punch, the film. It, it, I mean, yeah, but... I was gonna say... <laughs> Sorry. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> One of the shows that yeah. they, my personal favorite show, the a anime is an anime that exists. It's just like my favorite anime of all time, and they do a similar thing with is a show called Nichi Joe. Oh yeah, which is, I've shown John some of the clips, but they turn like normal ass things and turn them into ridiculous. I love That's the principal the... fighting the deer. That is a that is also great, but I also prefer the one where the policeman finds her yaoi and then she suplexes a goat. But oh yeah, <laughs> what? She does. Watch Nietzsche Joe, it's amazing! Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> All these of deer in my, my brain my po- to that burger van cartoon. I'm 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 gonna f I'm gonna find the the skit I was on about and I'm gonna put it in this Discord for afterwards. I'm, I'm but... tempted to I'm tempted for the title of this episode to be uh, Corby the anime fascist uh, the Corby the anime fascist <laughs> or Corby the anime con- commandant. Corby's commandant. big uh, anime rant. Corbe Sorbe anime. I accidentally called you Corbe there for some Corbe reason. Corbe Sorbe anime. I call him Corbe, but like Bay is in like girlfriend. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hate that term. Corbe. <laughs> Common down Corbe and the anime. But yeah, as I, was say- as I was saying, they do this thing where they take like. Because there's literally like during the fight, they do like it from Rika's perspective where like they're fighting on like rooftops with like cool ass fucking weapons. Mm like doing the power moves and then it cuts to like someone else's fight and she's just jabbing at her sister with a like a folded up umbrella yeah. and her sister's yeah. like just tr- just like <laughs> deflecting her with a ladle ironically <laughs> that could take an eye out it, it could yeah uh, there's, there's a lot of her sister hitting people with a ladle i don't umbrella versus ladle it, it is it's effective a, i mean for the ages classic schoolyard question what would win umbrella or ladle the ladle. The ladle always wins, but that's because, like, her, serious, her sister is sick of this shit. Okay, now the episode she, title she is knows... definitely The Ladle Always Wins. <laughs> like, like, seriously, she just, like, clocks people with the ladle, and she just doesn't give a fuck. Colby's here to ladle you some good hard anime. 
whether you want to or not. <laughs> Water boy <laughs> with anime soup. Just, no, he's staring straight ahead and just stroking his beard, just like. Oh no! Because the thing is, the it's, it's stuff. It's it's just it's because my mind works in weird ways. So when he said this ladle into our, I was like, "Give us the good anime soup, father." <laughs> Please, sir, like, can I have some like, more? Brother, will you give me some oats, meme? Uh, no, I was. I Mother, was the crab raccoon. The... I was gonna say the police, sir. Can I have some more one? <laughs> Good anime, mother. But yeah, there's um, a, there's a scene in episode three that's also great. It's like they try to set up a club, mm. just so they can right. like carry on doing whatever. Okay, and then like we're not getting any fans, or we're not getting anyone joining. So they join up with this other girl who is starting to start up a club of her own, but no one wants to join her club. But her club is for napping. I mean, that's I a good club. That sounds like yeah. an amazing <laughs> club. I. That's the thing, like... I would have joined that if I... If that all was of a thing us here were like, that's an amazing club. Like, she was the only member of that club somehow. Well, she was um, asleep when she should be recruiting, that's the problem. Th yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> so, they agree <laughs> to... They agree to, like, join with her to do, like, a joint club where it's just, like, far Middle East magic and, and napping anime society or something. I can't remember <laughs> what they called it. And then there's like, okay, we still don't, we still don't have enough people to do this. So Rika calls up one of the people she knows from the middle school there, uh, who is also a mad tune. He's like, so how do you know? How do you know this girl? Oh, which one is she? Hold on. Oh God. Give me a minute. This list is too long. A new challenger enters the arena. <laughs> Fight. Dekamori. That's her. Dekamori versus Ryoko. Fight. Oh no, she. she Dekamori gets into some fights okay. with um, another different girl later. Well, a girl I've talked about beforehand, but so she calls up Dekamori, who is basically like someone she met online, basically that went to their middle school. She basically was chatting to her via a forum. He's like, "Oh, we go to the same school," and then like because of weird Chunabio delusions, Dekamori keeps saying that she's the servant of Wicked Lord Sh Sh Shingen or whatever it is. For fuck's sake, he's got more. Yeah, there are more Tunabios. Speaking of more Tunabios, uh, Dekamori has this book that she keeps referring to it from. I can't remember what it's called. The Necronomicon um, is at this point? Called, is no. it Ubos, the ultimate book of spells? How the fuck do you pronounce Paul that? Paul Blatter, Mall Cop story. <laughs> <laughs> if only. Um, I, can't, I can't pronounce the name of this book, so I'm going to put it in Discord and ha let you three have a go at it. Is it Benedict Cumberbatch's autobiography? No. I think you mean Bumble Dick Cumble Snap. <laughs> Sorry. How I'm do gonna... you pronounce that word? Mabinogion. Mabinogion. I'm oh. going to try. Mabinogion. She, she has. She has. John said that... right. Yeah. Yeah. She, so she has that book, and then she's like talking about it. And um, you remember the girl I said, spoke about first of all? The um. Oh, that's what a good book. Name? Shinka. Sh mm -hmm. The the girl he bumped heads with on the train platform. Shinka. Yeah, she basically like overhears this and she's basically like she wants to destroy this book and everyone else is like oh. and you two is like, OK, but why? She's like, because it reminds me of the past. And he's like, wait a minute. And then she's like, turns out she's the same as him, where she also used to be Chunibyo and she got and she's come to high school yeah. where no one knows her. So she can start anew. So it's she's like, so she <laughs> became like stupid. She became like like class rep and like she does cheerleading and all this like normal girl stuff in air quotes. I know that's a horrible stereotype. Please it's don't hurt stereotypical, me. Like, but, girls. But, like in her mind, that's what she's doing. She like just does stuff to like try and basically like leave her tuna be pass behind. But Dekamori has this book that she refuses to let go of. And she, and then it becomes her goal is like, I need to get this book away from this girl. <laughs> So it's just like, th those two just like bitching over is like, that I wrote that book, give it back so it can be destroyed. No, you didn't write this book. You're not the real whoever wrote this book. What, the, what does she call her? What is the, the Morrisummer. M-O-R-I-S Summer. To be fair, if it's the book I, I'm thinking of, it was it was written in 1350 or the 14, or in between 1350 and 1410. So she didn't write I mean, it. I, I mean, like, <laughs> it's it's a tuny thing. You just rip off everything else. Yeah. The the, re the reason why that word is, is buggered is because it's Welsh. Ah. Oh. Well, she definitely <laughs> That ain't. makes so much more sense because the but Welsh yeah, as a, 
as I was saying, like, um, there's a huge thing about it where it's like most fiction, if you make up your own, you're going to end up like taking influence from something. And confirm. So as much. A bud- <laughs> as our resident budding author. So oh, yeah. much Battlestar Galactica influence. I told you, you need to watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes. I couldn't find it anywhere. I'm to hunt harder. <laughs> anyway. It is an all that's anime, which is probably yeah. why. But, um,. Yeah, so basically, like, the plot of this is, like, it's, like, cringe comedy from the Chuni. Like, th- she's doing this, and she's taking it serious, and everyone else is, like, why are you doing this? But then, it, as I say, it also becomes, like, a, like, they slowly come to understand each other, and, like, the feels just hit too hard. Hmm. And and as I say, I, ne- I didn't know there was a, se- there is a second season, and at least one movie for this. Wow. Huh. The, but the um, the movie I believe is basically it's the it's the first series, but it's for all from Rika's perspective. Oh, that's neat. So it's from the perspective of oh, the cool. Tunabio girl. Oh, interesting. Hmm. That'll be interesting actually. There's, yeah, love Tunabio and other delusions take on me, which I as I say is it from Rika's perspective. Was there another one? Apologies for the baboon you on. Oh no. Never mind. Turns out, uh, take on me is a different thing, and there's love tune to be one of the versions, Rika's version, which oh. is just like that from their side. So what's the other one about? I don't know. I need to actually watch more of this, and I can now that I've got a VPN. Yeah, well, you can bring you can bring up the start. That's what we're gonna VPN. speak. I say, speaking of VPN, my anime watching list has doubled. So my god, yeah. I'm gonna bring you some shit at yeah. some point. <laughs> oh, but next, but uh, yeah, as I said, like easy nine, possibly. Uh, yeah, I see. I don't know 9. what 8. would be my perfect anime. Come on, but poor this fox is octopuses. really fucking good. Sausage octopuses. Sausage yeah. octopus. Sorry, I have pork knuckles. That's my bad. Get, yeah. If you give it a ten, is it a pork knuckle? No, because he he can give he can. It's 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 obviously the it's the sausage octopus. But then if he if he really really likes it, it's a special thing. He gives it a pork knuckle as well. Pork knuckle. <laughs> a, 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 it's a sausage octopus with some extra knuckle. Yeah. Oh. Oh. But as I was saying, this is you know one of my... I, I can't gush about this show enough. This show is fucking fantastic. I love pretty much... I, I Literally, like, as pretty much as I'm done, I'm gonna, like, watch, watch season it. two. Oh, great. And probably the movies, now that I've got the VPN. I just need to drag myself away from Data Live, which uh, we'll be on, spoken about on this show at some point, because it's a dumpster fire. Oh, the best kind of <laughs> Yeah. Oh, In the oh. same... Um, by dumpster fire for those at home, I mean it's a dumpster fire in the same way that domestic girlfriend is a dumpster fire. Oh God, are you going to mention that at some point? I, I don't know if I want to, but at Good. the same time, it is like prime riffing material. I like how like you and Joel just know exactly what you're talking about, and me and Tom are just sat here like. I, yeah, Matt, I told the, you about it's, domestic it's the girlfriend. It's that fucked you in, block, in Blood Bowl Two. It's that. Oh, anime. the one I kept trying to murder. Yeah. The one that wouldn't die! <laughs> yeah, of all your gutter runners. <laughs> Domestic uh, girlfriend, the rat that lived. If you think about the name enough, it's bad. Uh, right, uh, anyway. Cool, well, I guess we're going to wrap it up there then. Uh, mm-hmm. Do we have Next cool? week is our fucking off-the-walls episode, so... Monthly special. Next week, there are no rules. <laughs> oh, yes. Nope. The rules, are, although what I'm starting to think I need to do at this point is before I go any deeper into other anime, I think what I'm going to do for that is just come up with a fucking Japanese glossary for stereotypes they have in anime. Yeah, send it. <laughs> that would like, be okay, helpful. Okay, so this is a tsundere. If you could this tell is us, a yandere. If you could just tell us to like turn to page five or something, it'd be really helpful. Page one hundred and seventeen. Would you please <laughs> open my anime list? I believe to page... I was thinking lolly earlier. That was the problem. Yeah, yeah, don't think of lollies. That will get you arrested. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, lollies will get you arrested. But yeah, next week is super special. Uh, it might be themed, it might not. There are no rules. That is the point. My, Last week's mine theme will theme actually be educational theme. for once. Last week's oh. theme is totally accidental. Oh, 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 oh. As I say, I'm just going to teach Japanese uh, thingy terms. There you go. Mm. So I'm, I'm going to also have to find just a bunch of anime girls and just be like, this is this one. You'll probably recognize this one from the memes. Uh, You'll recognize this one from other memes. So we've got learning and we've got murder. So good. Oh, yeah, you're doing stuff. true crime, aren't and you? Good stuff. Mystery. Are you doing true crime for the uh, special? Yes. Ah. So. 
Matt's going to try and find the Zodiac Killer and bring no, him on for the next the episode. Zodiac. Everybody knows that the Zodiac Killer is Ted Cruz because he's a gorilla. We all know that to be true. I thought you were going to say Ted Bundy. I knew he said. I Ted also Bundy. thought you were going to say Ted Bundy. <laughs> I was trying to remember. <laughs> Ted Bundy <laughs> resents that. Yeah. Zodiac Killer is Ted, Ted Bundy. Ted will remember this. Gorilla isn't isn't right. <laughs> Everybody anyway. remembers the Zodiac Killer right. is Ted Mosby. Exactly. Um, it's just anyway. a Ted. Pluggables, gentlemen. Plug- pluggables! I have... God, where's my fucking list? I have a YouTube and I have a... I'm going to say a Twitch. I technically have a Twitch as well, but that's not in the description. I was going to say Twitter. Thank you. Which are, as I've said, in the description down below and possibly might be an end card on this, provided I get my arse into gear and put end cards for me and Tom on. My God. It'd be good. Mm. Mm. I have a Twitter, which is at Random Jock, and a YouTube, which is Tom H. Jordan. Uh, and if you go to Random Jock Comics on Facebook, you can read the comics that I've made. Indeed. These they ones may or not. may not be better than the headcanon for one small town. <laughs> also, Your mileage may vary. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find us on Spotify. We are on Spotify now. Uh, iTunes podcast pending yeah. when we sort that out. And if you're on Spotify, you might be able to find some images on on YouTube. Well, the, the, the video because YouTube the thumbnail is pretty good. Thumbnails. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The thumbnail. They are the majestic as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tom tries and he he, he succeeds. And he always delivers. Yeah. He does. He's like a oh, very efficient you. stalk, like Harry O'Daniels. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> John, Harry O'Daniels, who comes to visit <laughs> the children every year. I believe you presents. normally. I believe you normally show us the door rather forcefully with your metaphors or whatever oh, they are. So uh, please, well, yes, show the me proverb. the door so right. I get on the floor. You got ten get seconds to guess whether or not this is a real proverb or not. Mm-hmm. A country can be judged by the quality of its proverbs. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds legit. <laughs> I'm, I'm true. Saying, I'm saying Dude. false. I'm going to go against the grain. Dude. All right, Tom. Two truths and a false. To Jews and false. It is true. It's a German problem. Who's <laughs> a German problem? Who is the German? It's great.